Hey everybody, I'm Steve and welcome back to Retro Tech. Today we're going to be looking at uh, CRT prices for the last nine weeks. This is a little episode I like to do every once in a while that I call Market Watch. And today we're going to be looking at the last nine weeks of sales data. So this is going to be exclusively pro CRT monitor sales on eBay. And that is in North America. And it's also between the dates of July 1st, 2020 and then September 8th, 2020. Now, most of these sales do include shipping and that's going to be noted if they don't. I'll have a little uh, note beside each item that did not include shipping. So you know that. And then we're definitely going to highlight some specific monitor sales. And today we're going to just be looking at Sony PVM and BVM Trinitron monitors. So I hope that uh, we all can get together and learn a little more because I'm highly fascinated with the way that the market just continues to go crazy on the CRTs. So first off, I want to take a look at just some Sony BVM sales. There weren't a huge ton of BVM sales this past nine weeks. We were looking at a lot of smaller ones and we had four eight zero four five Qs, which is a pretty standard uh, travel monitor, eight inch screen. And those all went between $250 and $310 was the most expensive one. So it's pretty standard pricing between $250 to $300 on that monitor. And then we did have a 14E5U, which is a nice 14-inch BVM that only does 480i and 240p, but it went for 430. And then a multi-format D14H5U went for 7 hundred and twenty seven dollars and that is it for the most part for those smaller bvms and none of those sales really stuck out to me as special uh, there just is a lot less of a quantity of bvms on the market than say something like pvms and other uh, monitors so keep that in mind when you're looking at your pricing here and one other thing that we're going to look at is another Sony BVM sale. This is a larger one. This is a 20 F1U on July 31st, and it sold for $1,900. It was free shipping. And um, the thing that I noticed about this one is it said it was a grade C monitor. Now, this should have a protective glare, anti-glare layer on it if it's not already been removed. But uh, if it hasn't, then if there's any scuffs, that can be removed by removing that anti-glare layer. But there's a pretty high price on that monitor. And if we go to the next one, this is a Sony BVM 20F1U on August 15th for $2,800. And if you notice here, that included the shipping cost, which was freight. And let's look at some details on this one because this is a pretty unique uh, monitor listing here. This one was, of course, sold by Save on Pat out in California, the uh, ex Sony tech who worked for a long time with these monitors professionally uh, throughout the 90s and 2000s and is retired now, but he still works on these and does sell some on eBay. And this was one of his listings. Now, the coolest thing about this monitor is it only had 18 hours of operation time listed on the listing. Uh, it did include a card reader or uh, input, you know, control module and hookup cables. So all around, it's a nice package with $2,800. This is something on the higher end. And then we have one more large BVM sale that I wanted to just highlight here. And that was a Sony BVM A21, A24 EW1, E1WU. Goodness, if I can get that right. BVM A twenty four E one W U, there we go, and it wasn't twenty eight hundred. I'm sorry, it was twenty nine hundred dollars and ninety twenty almost three thousand one dollars short of it. That it did not include the shipping cost on there, and that one only included the sixty two HS. It was also listed with a remote, but it said it had a hundred thousand hours on it. So that's pretty risky for three thousand hour or three thousand dollars. And I don't know if the buyer already had the analog cards or if they just wanted a HD CRT. So that was a quite an interesting sale. So that was pretty much it. All That's all for the BVM sales on eBay over the last nine weeks. Again, not a huge um, number of sales total. Uh, but however, if we jump over to the PVMs, there's a just astronomical number of sales here first we're going to start with our eight inch models and we had 54 
54 8 inch models of PVMs that wound up selling during this time period, totaling almost $6,300. The 82. 20 and 8221 that is a composite only monitor and that's the one in the upper right hand picture with uh, grand theft auto on it average selling price shipped is 85 dollars right now and in the 8040 and 8041s, ones those actually add a speaker and s video support and those are a little bit more at 125 and 155 is the jumping point up to a RGB monitor, which would be the 42s and the 44Qs. And then the 45Qs are the same kind of deal. So there was quite a few sales there. 27, uh, 8, 0, 4, 2, 4, 4, and 4, 5Q sales, all around $150 shipped each. So that's a pretty good price point for that monitor. If you're looking for one right now, they're selling right at about $150. There were some 9L series, which is just a little bit newer version of those smaller monitors. Those were selling for $178 on average shipped. There were seven sales of that. But again, just a large number of sales here. And a lot of those 8-inch monitors are selling. That's quite a bit uh, for a nine-week period. Next, we're going to take a look at one Sony PVM 8044Q listing. And it was again from our friend Save on Pat. And he had another one that he had refurbished and worked on. This one went for $248 shipped, which was a little bit more than the average. However, due to the fact that it's been serviced, it's well worth that extra $100, I felt like. And it was a good idea to highlight this because this was the highest uh, sale or highest monetized you know, sale monetarily. Uh, for the last nine weeks on an 8-inch analog RGB monitor. Next, we're going to look at our 12 and 13-inch series PVM sales. And I added the 12-inch there because there were actually a few 1271 monitors. Now, that's a 12-inch RGB monitor from the 80s. And there were quite a few of those that actually showed up on eBay in the last nine weeks. And three of them sold all pretty much right around that $225 to $230 price point. And again, it's a really good monitor if you want to start off and just have a cheap entryway into RGB. You'll also get composite and S-video support with that monitor. And those, ten, those tubes do tend to last a long time. Next, we're going to jump up to the 13 40 and 1341 and 44Q models. Now, it's kind of surprising to me that the 1340 had three sales, averaging 378. I kind of see the discrepancy on some of these monitors that we're going to talk about in this 13-inch category. I feel like the reason the prices are different is maybe some people are having some confusion on which models actually do what and which ones are better than which. So there are some good resources to check out, but I'll try to briefly explain as we go through the pricing here what might be some of the differences and why some of these shouldn't be priced higher than the other ones. But, you know, sometimes people just get where it's just a one-time thing and there's only one 13-inch available, so sometimes a little bit of a bidding war might happen for some of these where the prices are a little bit spiked where they shouldn't be. So again, those 44 Qs are right around a $250 price point, and then you're jumping up on that 1351 and 54 Q because you're jumping into a monitor that actually adds a service menu, and it's a newer model than those four series. So that's a got a service menu added. It has component support. It adds uh, mono speaker to all inputs for the support. So those ones obviously are going to be a little bit more right around that 400 to $420 price point, five sales of that monitor. Uh, but again, if you're looking for something that's cheaper on the end of RGB, those are some monitors to target maybe those 1340 level uh, monitors because they're really good, but they just don't have service menus and they're a little bit older. So they do tend to sell for a little bit less than the newer ones. Uh, there were also a bunch of L series sales, M series sales, and N series sales. And then uh, there's some average prices there on which you know line cost which. The L series about 600, M series about 500, and the N series about 265. Quite a few monitors sold right there, totaling 50 PVMs in the 14 inch and 13 inch and 12 inch category at almost $18,000 in nine weeks. That's just an incredibly high number. For only eBay sales, I'm not taking into account any other type of, uh, you know, sales forum for or sales method for this time period. So anyway, let's jump into some more 
of these specific listings. And first, I want to take a look at the L series because this was some interesting information. First off, the L1. Uh, the L1 sold quite a few monitors, and it was priced up quite a bit higher, too, than I thought it should be valued at, or at least at the top end of that. So let's take a look at some of these sales. Five total, averaging on the low end from $170 all the way up to $464. And what I want you to take a look at is that $170, that is a pickup, and that is a good deal on that monitor. But take a look at the picture I've provided here. Just note that the L1 is the one monitor in the L series that doesn't support anything beyond composite and S video. So you're not going to get support for component or RGB through this monitor. Now, everything else is pretty much the same as the other L series or the L2, except it doesn't support those extra lines. So I'm kind of concerned that these ones are already starting to creep up in price for just an S video and composite only monitor. Um, and I, I was really surprised to see multiple sales for over $460. Now that is shipped, but still to have that sell for that price is pretty amazing to me. Next, I want to look at a couple of L5 sales. So these were by the same seller. So there's a possibility they are the same sale, but I do believe they might have been different because I feel like this seller, when I was doing some research, had quite a few around the same time period. And I do remember people telling me that they had bought some from this seller. So I found two listed at the same price. Buy it now, $770. That is about to go in rate for a shipped 14L5 that works well right now. I feel like that's a good price. And so two sales there. Next, we're going to move on to our M series monitors. And this is, again, one of the largest categories of sales because it's one of the best RGB monitors overall. But we're going to have a huge uh, discrepancy in our prices for the exact same monitor model again. And this is going to have to do with a lot of time of just being consistent with watching uh, listings and also, you know, how. Uh, Sometimes you get in a bidding war on something on eBay, and I think that's there's a good example here. Uh, all in all, though, I do feel like this is a pretty low average price still for 14M2U. Now, one thing to note on all these, none of these were listed as refurbished. They were all tested and good. One was a pickup at 260 Great deal. But the thing I really wanted to highlight here is the unbelievable deal that two people got. One as recent as two days ago, and I don't know how I personally missed these auctions but these were buy it now is pretty much one for 177 dollars and one for 150 dollars shipped on an m series working uh you know just i guess somebody really sometimes just wants to get rid of these so you kind of have to set all the alerts and be ready to go because some people got some incredible deals there was a third sale for 200 so i don't i mean that's some incredibly low prices i feel like that the the this monitor generally will go for between $350 to $500, depending on the condition and if it's on an auction or not. Let's take a closer look at some of these lower priced sales. First off, this $150 shipped light priced monitor here. I even have a picture pulled up of somebody who had test patterns pulled on this and they had a sold for buy it now of $99.95. And that's just crazy. It's from California. Uh, somebody really wanted to get rid of it badly because they priced it that and I bet you it sold probably within an hour. So uh, let these listings I'm going to go through here right now be kind of a, a, a beacon of hope to you if you don't have a large budget just stay on top of these things and constantly be looking because I'm baffled by some of these sales. Next, we've got another one. Again, showing the screen tested and turned on. This one is missing the Sony emblem, but at still at $200 shipped, that is a fantastic price and definitely not, you know, you can't lose at that price for eBay. Finally, We've got a $177 listing that just happened two days ago, and I really am just beside myself because normally I watch these. I can't believe these three listings got even out from under me. It just shows I haven't had the time to watch them myself, but there are still great buys uh, around. So if anybody got these monitors, please let us know in the comments how it turned out because you definitely got some incredible deals there. Next, let's look at the 14M4U sales, which again, there were three that I felt two were really good deals. One was a really good deal too, that it was a pickup, but one was just unbelievably blown out of the water. And it was the 
big sale of the month that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I'm wondering if something nefarious is going on, but there's nothing really to prove that yet. But we'll take a closer look at this bidding history or the actual auction itself. This was for a pristine Sony PVM 14M4U video monitor high res. And it came from, again, California. Uh, it was listed as having the original box. There are photos of the box. This monitor did start off at a very low price and after 41 bids took off to over $1,607. Oh, it's $80. Over $1,680. I mean, that's just a staggering price for that. That's almost what they would have charged for them. Um, you know, refurbished from Sony directly, most likely back in the day when these were actually in use. So this listing just totally blew me away. I posted it around to see what other people thought. You know, sometimes these eBay auctions, you got sellers that have multiple accounts that will sit there and bid up their items. So I don't know if that was going on here. There's really no evidence to prove it. So, but uh, the fact too is a lot of these, a lot of times the uh, box monitors do not come available very often. And now that it's 2020, it's getting really even harder every day to get another one of these. So this is just proof that, you know, if you have one in great condition and still have the original box, you can command a high number. And then speaking of ones in boxes, this is another one that sold uh, just last night. And this was actually from one of my Patreon members. So good luck or shout out to you for going and getting this and um his name's nicholas and he got it for 460 now he is going to drive and pick it up but this is an incredible deal it's a 14 m for you in the original box it included an x extron cross point and an rgb interface with that so that's just an awesome deal 460 in the original box and you know compared to the listing we looked at just before it just a un you know unbelievable how these listings could just be different priced uh that's why the auctions just seem to get out of control and maybe some of these buy it nows are um maybe sometimes desperate to sell them or don't really feel like it should be sold for more than that so it feels like you're getting a better deal most of the time with buying a buy it now when you find one and jump on it don't these auctions are just getting out of control sometimes now, I want to talk about the Sony PVM N-Series. This is an important conversation, guys, because some of these N-Series monitors are, again, S-Video only monitors. They're only 500 TV lines, but there were quite a few sales of them, the 14 in that time period. So uh, the average price was $262 here, and the, uh, the shocking thing was as many of those monitors were, or half of them, were the non-RGB units, and they were going for the same prices as the RGB units. So again, that makes me think that people are not paying full attention to which monitor they're maybe bidding on or buying, and they don't realize sometimes that they're getting one that doesn't have RGB, and it only does S-Video and Composite. So just so you know, the ones that are N2 and N6 have the RGB inputs in them, and the ones that are N1s and N5s are not RGB. So you would have to, you can convert those to RGB with adding components, uh, but it doesn't make sense that they're going for the same price as the ones with RGB. They should be going for a little bit less. I mean, I normally would sell this kind of a monitor uh, before shipping for $150. So $260 would be normally uh, about that price. But again, this is eBay. So these, you know, these monitors shouldn't be going for too much more than that 250 shipped on eBay. Uh, but they're, they're right at that now. Uh, and so you're actually getting a deal if you find one with RGB, I guess. Maybe that's the way to look at it instead of thinking that the S-Video ones are too high. Next, I want to look at a specific, again, PVM 1353MD. And I'm sorry, I know I keep highlighting Save on Pat's sales here, but every category, he has the highest uh, priced, probably best listed item for that size and sale over the last nine weeks so we know he's been busy it's not just me fixing crts he's been quite busy and he's got them and he's been selling them a lot so good for him and again i, I just don't don't think there's any affiliation here i just am highlighting these sales because they are impressive to me and i love to look at them this one again refurbished you're looking at 800 uh, and twenty dollars for this sale, eight hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, but again, another great example of a wonderful starting monitor. If you got this one, I'm sure it's going to be perfect, and you'll never want to get rid of it. 
1353 is just like the tw- or 14M2 MDU. It has the two sets of RGB and component switchable inputs, which nowadays is probably one of the best features of that particular line of PVMs. Next, I want to draw, jump over and look at some random large PVM sales. This will be on the 20-inch and larger screens, starting to look at those sales numbers. Again, not a huge number on here. Mostly people were buying the 14 and 8-inch monitors. We did have some. So first, there was one 1953 ST, which is pretty much the same as the 1953 MD all the way. It's nearly identical. $957 shipped. That's a, a about you know what you'd probably expect to pay on eBay, almost $1,000 for that monitor now. Right under that, we have a 20 into u that was picked up for 155. That's a pretty darn good deal. There is an oppor- there is a chance that some of those N2s, even though I say they all uh, generally have RGB, double check the back of the monitor because occasionally somehow sometimes it could have a, the other board in there, and it might just have S video. So even though I told you the N2s, definitely check them and double check before you buy one to make sure that it has that component board. And that's the input board where your power and your video inputs go into. But that was a really good deal. A 20L2 recently sold for almost $1,000. A couple of 2030s sold for $800 each. And then we had a 2530 that sold for $1,000, which is this monitor right here in the background is a 2530. And we've also got some of the other monitors, for example, behind us in today's show. So uh, one of the other things I wanted to look at is, of course, the M series sales on a 20 inch monitor. We're talking about the M2s first, and there's a big price discrepancy again between all these monitors. So we need to look at some of them and uh, highlight them a little bit more closely. First, I'm going to actually start with the one that's the second cheapest down here. I think that this is a pretty good average price there. But if we look at these individually, the second or the very last one down here for $500, that one I think had an issue with it. Now, the screen was turned on, but it was either in under scan mode or might have had some components bad on it. So that one should be uh, marked as taken, uh, you know, example of or, or marked out. And then this one on 718 it was a pickup. So that one, just note that those two are anomalies on the cheap end, the reason they're costing less. And I just want to highlight these more expensive ones because it blew me away again. This one was $1,500 shipped from Pennsylvania. Came with lots of cables, tested, uh, really good shape, 20 M2 MDU, and somebody just wanted it. $1,500 later, boom, they got it. And so that was an incredible sale this month. Not from Save on Pat. This is another cool one for $995. It's in the original box. And then you had an t- additional $95 shipped. So not a terrible deal, I guess. If you're going to be spending $1,000 and expecting to spend that, you definitely want to have that box because obviously that adds value and it will continue to add value if you could keep that box. My suggestion is... If you do ship a box like this, double box it so you can protect the box inside of another outer box. Lastly, I want to look at our, uh, or not lastly, but next for the M series, lastly, I want to look at the 20 M4U sales. M4U prices are really getting up there. So not just on the 14 inches, but now on the 20 inches, you're not going to pay normally less than $1,000 for one. And a lot of times you're going to spend between twelve dollars to $1,500 on them now. It's just getting crazy. The auctions are going nuts. This particular monitor, it is 800 TV lines and looks really awesome. But again, the fact that it's over $2,000 sometimes is kind of head scratching. This was on the last day of the month of July. This one went for $2,000 nearly. Now, the funny thing was this auction actually happened twice. So it went once and it closed at like $2,200. And obviously that person didn't pay because the auction was relisted, uh, and then it went another week, and then it finished out at nearly the same number. So uh, just some history on that one, because I did watch it as it happened. Next, I'll show you this 20M4U, which I'm gotta, I'm going to chastise this seller right here. If you're looking at this, seller, look what you're doing. You, It looks like you're listing this, and you're, list, you're leaning this uh, plastic-backed PVM, and I mean plastic back of the case. You're putting that case directly on the carpet, And you're putting all this PVM's weight against that plastic back shell. 
and that could destroy this PVM within seconds. What a, well, I hope he's not doing this, but it looks to me like that's what's happening. You should not do that with your monitor, okay? Especially one that you're going to list for $1,500, $1,650 shipped. How about that? So, again, um, you know, I, I get, it, oh, cannot, cannot do that with the monitor. That's dangerous. But anyway, let's move to the last one. This was almost $1,000 and free shipping. Uh, Georgia is where it came from in the United States. Another just 20 M for you. And it has again, become one of the most sought after PVMs in the marketplace. Last, I want to talk about Sony PVM 20 L five sales. And, uh, this one has basically had an average price of $2,200 all of a sudden there's five sales recently. And I'm not going to really go into each individual sale on this one because there wasn't too much to note. The only thing I will tell you is I did talk to uh, the people who bought the two lowest price ones on that list. Those people are Patreon members of the RetroTech uh, Patreon page, which there's a link to in the description. They conversed with me and I advised them on both these. And they out, I mean, and even though I didn't directly sell it to them, I mean, through my advice, they were able to get these at the best prices on the market $1,700. That was a shipped price. And then $1,300 was a pickup. And so both of those are really great deals considering this monitor is pushing over $2,500 shipped for an average price now on eBay, which is just astounding. This monitor used to be uh, auctioned. It would go for like 900 bucks just a year and a half ago. But now we're looking at this thing getting almost three times that as we roll into the end of 2020. It'll be interesting to see how this one and other really high-end monitors continue to grow in price as the year goes on. And friends, this is the time where we're just going to summarize a lot of the stuff we've talked about here today. And uh, what I want to do is go over the fact that 132 Sony PVMs and BVMs, and that's just those, were sold on uh, in nine weeks in eBay alone. I didn't include Olympus brand monitors. I didn't include Panasonic's, JVC, Ikigami's, none of that. I didn't include any government auction sites. I didn't include any sales that were on CRT Reddit's forums or in Facebook groups or anywhere else on the internet, which would have been like Craigslist, OfferUp. They are still sold of those kind of things. Uh, you're looking at definitely in this time period at least 150 crts that have been sold maybe even more on ebay alone that sales number was a staggering over fifty nine thousand dollars during that time period so that's a nine week time period um if i were to stretch that out and average that and you know make it out into a year we're looking at a market now on ebay that's just about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars annually for crts which is just incredible and i like to see that i like to see people really caring about these this is not a fluke anymore 132 crt sony bvm and pvm sales in a one you know small time period of just two months and one week it, it kind of proves and and again all the other episodes of Ret retro tech uh, market watch that I've done before this that have kind of highlighted more sales. It just proves this isn't a fluke. This stuff's growing then and the prices uh, are just going to continue. It looks like to go up, especially on uh, the multi formats and the high res CRTs. Those are climbing astronomically. Um, and if anything's larger than uh, 14 inches, it's going up even faster. So that's it. This month um what i plan to do is i plan to have one more of these episodes probably in another nine weeks and then hopefully at the end of the year we can take that information plus the information in the last couple weeks of the year put it all together and see what the whole market has done over the last entire year will combine all the information from all the episodes and have a year-end roundup uh, but again my name is steve if you guys enjoyed this please make sure you leave a like and share the video somewhere with somebody who's interested in crts and um, if you find one of these crts definitely make sure you know what condition it is because that's the biggest factor too is the condition of the monitor so make sure that uh, you don't just throw this away. If you find one of these, you might have a gold mine on your hands and at least a nice couple thousand dollars if you have one that you could sell. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.